wisdom, love, and ways that lift spirits and touch hearts. Thank you very much for your kind expressions of love, prayer, cards, phone calls, and encouraging words. You have truly been a blessing. I appreciate all you have done. God's blessings to you all as I recover from my surgery. You are amazing in all that you are and in everything that you do. Thank you. God bless. Love. Faye Dunn. And she's recovered so well, she's in the choir this morning. Also, on behalf of all the women of the Christ Baptist Church, Pastor Robertson, we'd like to thank you for allowing us to take over the church last Sunday. We thank you so much. Also, Sunday school continues to be held on Sunday mornings by telephone conference calls. There are three classes each Sunday morning at 8 a.m., 8.30, and last but not least at 11.30 a.m. New members meet on Tuesday at 5 p.m., teenagers and young adults at 11 a.m. on Saturday on Facebook Live. Please call the church for your numbers to join. Bible study is held virtually on Wednesday. Please join us. The link and the telephone numbers will be provided. If you need it, please call the church. But come and join us on Wednesday at noon. The community food giveaway is every Wednesday until November 3rd. It's from 10 a.m. to noon, and it is at the Calumet Township Multipurpose Center. 1900 West 41st Avenue. We have an invitation, Christ Baptist. The pleasure of your company is requested at the wedding ceremony celebration of Alice Neely and Leon Walker. That will be Saturday, October 9th, 2021 at 2 p.m. The the ceremony will be held at Unity Baptist Church, 2019 Connecticut Street, Gary, Indiana. No reception, masks are required. Congratulations to Ms. Alice Neely. For the past six years, our own coach, Alexandra Bradley, and her Lady Cougars volleyball team sponsors breast cancer awareness tournaments. And this will be held Saturday, October 2nd, 2021, where they honor breast cancer survivors. Due to the pandemic, there will be no actual walk. They only have a walk. But they're asking for donations to continue to honor breast cancer survivors. You can see Coach D or call her at 219-629-4795, or you can contact me. If you would like to donate. If you are celebrating your birthday today, or you celebrated your birthday this past week, would you please stand it so that we can celebrate with all birthday celebrants? Please stand. Well, we have no birthday celebrants. In preparation for budget year 2022 for the Christ Baptist Church, any and all requests from any Christ Baptist Ministries must be submitted in writing by October 1st, 2021 to the trustee ministry. You can turn it in at the office or you can get it to any trustee that you see. These are our morning announcements as we continue to celebrate 40 years of service. Continue to praise God for all He has done for Christ Baptist as we move into a new phase of maturity. Also, I like to say this morning, our first lady has returned to us. She looks nice and healthy. Good morning. Have a wonderful, safe, and blessed week. We will now have a welcome given by Trustee Joanne Williams.
Good morning. Will all of our visitors please stand? All visitors. Seeing that we have no visitors this morning, let's give ourselves a round of applause.
allowing the word to go forth with boldness and understanding. Where your name is magnified and glorified, and your people are edified, and your kingdom is advanced. This is my prayer. I'm your servant, and you are my God. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's all about him. Paul writes this letter to the Colossian church as a message of encouragement. Paul is pleased with this Gentile church, the church at Colossae. This church is doing the right thing by teaching the Jesus Christ that lived, died, was buried, and was resurrected from the grave. This church is doing the right thing by the teachings of Jesus Christ. Paul loved this church. Paul loved all the churches he planted. However, when writing to the other churches, Paul would have to correct these other churches. He would have to admonish the other churches and rebuke them. Paul had to warn the other churches, the church at Galatia, the Corinthian church, the Roman church, the Ephesian church, the Apostle Paul has always correct and rebuke those churches. The church Paul had to warn the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 when he wrote to them, Beware of false apostles, deceitful workers. They transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. When Paul wrote to the Galatian church, when they had gone astray and were listening to a different doctrine, Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 3, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Christ Jesus was portrayed before you as crucified and resurrected. Are you so foolish that now you're trying to follow the flesh? You're trying to gain salvation by way of the flesh. Paul had to admonish the other churches. Paul warned the Philippian church about conflict in the church. He warned the church of Rome about sexual immorality. And in Acts chapter 20, verse 31, Paul says to the Ephesian church, he says, For three years I never stopped warning you, night and day, even warning you with tears. And in Acts 20, verse 26, Paul wrote these words, after warning the church, the Ephesian church, for three years, Paul says, therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. In other words, Paul wrote to the Ephesian church, he says to them, if you die and go to hell, it's not my fault. Because I have been warning you I have been correcting you and rebuking you. Paul had to always rebuke and admonish the other churches. But this letter to the Colossian church, this is a letter of loving encouragement. In verses 3 through 8, Paul says, We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, always praying for you. He says, We heard of your faith in Christ, and your love for all the saints. He says, we heard that the gospel that you learned is now bearing fruit, and you're growing as a church in leaps and bounds. Paul is pleased with the Colossian church. He says, Ephorus, our fellow servant, a faithful minister, has come to tell us of your love in the Spirit. Paul is writing to the church, the Colossian church, saying, we heard of so many good things about you that we pray that you keep doing what you're doing. You know it's good when people get good things about you. It's good when people can spread the good things that you're doing. So many people say bad things about you. It's easy to talk about somebody, but what about talking about the good things that are going on in the world today? Here this Ephesus has come back to report to Paul all of the good things that are happening at the Colossal Church. Paul says, we've heard of the good things that you're doing. Paul says, we. He says, we. What does he mean when he says, we? We heard about all of those good things. In verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, 
by the will of God and Timothy, our brother. It is Paul and Timothy who write this letter to the Colossian church. They write it together. Biblical scholars say that Paul wrote this letter in his old age and was losing his eyesight. And Timothy, he would lean on Timothy to help him in his last letter that he wrote. But when, it, when Paul says, we, we heard, he means more than just Timothy and himself. In Colossians chapter 4, Paul tells us who is with him when he's writing this letter. You have to understand that Paul is a prisoner. Paul is under house arrest in Rome. He is allowed to go out and come in. He is allowed to go about, but only with the Roman guard guarding him. And when he says, we heard of your faith in Christ, in Christ Jesus, Paul, he lists all of those who are with him in Colossians chapter 4. He says, Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister, has heard about you. Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, is with me. He says, Archicus is with me, a fellow prisoner and a fellow Greek. He greets you. He says, Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, is with me. And in chapter 4 of Colossians, verse 14, Paul says, Even Luke, the beloved physician, one of Jesus' own disciples, is here with me. That's the we he's talking about. He says, we heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and your love for all saints. Why is Paul so pleased with this church? Why is Paul so pleased with the Colossian church? Because the ch Colossian church was teaching Jesus. The Colossian church was preaching all about Jesus. The other churches are allowed to cause the apostles to come in, and they were preaching everything but Jesus. But the Colossian church, they weren't preaching about philosophy and, and Socrates and Plato. The, the Colossian church, the other churches were preaching about astronomy and, and the stars and the moon, and they were preaching about Scientology and worship the universe when the Lord created the heavens and the earth. They were talking about everything but Jesus. They were talking about prosperity sermons and money come to me. They were preaching everything but Jesus. The other churches, the Corinthian church, the Ephesian church, the Galatian church, they allowed these false teachers to come in and preach everything but about the Lord. These false apostles were teaching godless myths. They were teaching old wives' tales. They were teaching superstition. They were teaching, don't step on the crack or you're going to break your mother's back. They were teaching things like, don't break a mirror. Don't open an umbrella inside. Don't drink too much black coffee when you grow up and be real black. They were teaching everything but Jesus. They were also teaching that to be a Christian, you have to be a Jew first. They were teaching that to be a Christian, you have to abstain from certain foods. These false teachers had made their way into the first century church and they were teaching the Gentiles that in order to be a Christian, you have to be a Jew. In order to be a Christian, you have to be like me. You have to dress like me. You have to wear your hair like me. You have to live like me. Eat what I eat. Do what I do. They had set themselves to be the standard of what it is to be a Christian. There are people who would do that. They will try to make themselves the standard. They say, if you want to be a Christian, you have to eat unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They said, if you want to be a Christian, there were certain foods that you are not allowed to eat. We consider them unclean. These false teachers, they have taken what God had created. God created every creature that crawled upon the face of the earth. God created them. God told Peter, don't ever call anything I created unclean. God created everything. And now they have taken what God has created and determined that what God has created to be, whether it's clean or unclean. These false teachers that categorize any fish that comes out of the water, if the fish has gills but no scales, you can't eat that. That's heavy. They have said, if, if there's something that comes out of the water that has an external shell and no internal spine, that's not to be consumed. That's strength. That's why. 
They can say that if there's an animal with a split hook and he roots for his food, you can't eat that. That's a baby. That's a baby of that baby. That's a poor child. They say that, that if there's an animal who chews its cud and walks on all four legs, you can't eat that. That's steak. That's hamburger. That's a neck bone. That's oxtail soup. That's crazy. That's all we need. They were teaching all of these things that had nothing to do with salvation. Nothing to do with Jesus. All of their sermons had nothing to do with Jesus. Watch out. Watch out for preachers who teach and preach and never get to Jesus. Watch out for preachers who, who stand before you and preach and teach about fire and brimstone and bombs falling and the end of the world. They teach about calamities and earthquakes and diseases and pestilence. They preach about sorrows and fire and they never talk about Jesus. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus. Yes, we are pressed hard on every side, but it's still all about him. Yes, we may, be, we may be abandoned, but we're not in despair because it's all about Him. They yes. yes. always ask the question when you hear a sermon, where's Jesus in this message? Where's the Lord? Where is the salvation? Where is the redemption in the message? That's why Paul says in verse 24, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. Paul said, I took a lot of heat. For you, I took a lot of heat by teaching you Gentiles about Jesus. I rejoice in my suffering. I received a lot of criticism, a lot of backlash. I even received death threats for bringing you to the knowledge of Christ. I now rejoice because I know that all of my labor was not in vain. I took all of that affliction for his body, which is the church. God allowed me to reveal the mystery of Christ to you, the Gentiles. This mystery of Christ that now has taken hold in you. Paul oh, said, I rejoice in my sufferings now because my work is not in vain. I can rejoice because I've seen the fruit of my labor. I can rejoice now because the Colossian church, you have become imitators of Christ. In verse 28, Paul reminds them to just keep on doing what you're doing. In verse 28, he says, keep preaching Jesus crucified and resurrected. In verse 28, he says, Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Paul says in the New King James Version, Him we preach. My mother was an English teacher, and that's not right. Like him we preach. In English, that's a bad sentence. That's bad grammar. Him we preach. Paul puts the object before the verb. Paul puts, he places the object, him, before the verb, preach. That tells me that Paul is emphasizing that if Christ isn't first, if Christ isn't the focus of your preaching, if Christ isn't the center, then it's not real preaching. He says, him we preach. I'm going to close on those three words. These three words, that's what Stevie wanted to say, right? These three words, him we preach. These three words, short and simple. These three words, sweet and kind, him we preach. Him we preach. Somebody said to me one day, preacher, you always finish your sermons at Calvary. You always finish your sermon with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Why? Because him we preach. You may not understand. It's not about me. It's not about how many degrees you have. It's not, it's not about how many accolades and organizations you belong to. It's all about him. Him we preach. Paul uses this pronoun throughout this letter and throughout his writings. You see, Paul uses that pronoun, him. In verse 10, Paul says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. In verse 16, Paul says, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, and invisible, visible and invisible, thrones of dominions, principalities of power, all things were created through him and for him. It's all about him. 
Verse 17, Paul says, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. In verse 19, Paul says, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Paul uses this pronoun him, this pronoun him throughout all of his writings. Paul would finish by saying, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. He would say, Now unto him, because he would say, Him we preach is all about him. Him we preach is all about the one who created the heavens and the earth. Him we preach is all about the one who said, I am the Father of one. Him we preach, the creator and sustainer of the heavens and the earth. The one who lived a perfect and sin-free, righteous life. It's about the one who speaks truth and power, authority and majesty. Him we preach. He talked about the one that spoke to the wind and the waves. He talked to the storm one day, and everything got quiet. Him we preach, the one who turned water into wine and a wedding container. The one who led the multitude with two fish and five barley loaves. I'm talking about him we preach, the one who makes you smile in the midst of sorrow. The one that can give you joy even when you're mourning. The one that can give you peace in the midst of chaos. Him we preach. I'm talking about the one who, in him we move, in him we live, in him we have our being. It's all about him. I'm talking about in him we preach, about the one who came to the disciples one evening walking on the water. I'm talking about the one who has the power to perform miracles, signs, and wonders. The one who has the power and authority over sickness. Him we preach who has power over time. Him we preach who has power over deafness. Power over lameness. Power over diabetes. Him we preach, the one who stood before Pilate, who said, My kingdom is not of this world. The one who, when they were there in his hands and nailed his feet, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Him we preach, I'm talking about him, all the way back to the Old Testament and through the New Testament. It's all about him. Ezekiel was preaching down to a valley of dry bones, and Ezekiel said he heard a noise. Bones come together. Why? Him we preach. Jacob was sleeping one night and he saw a ladder coming down from heaven and touching the earth. And he saw angels ascending and descending. That means coming down and going up. Jacob that evening, he was preaching, he was dreaming all about him. Him we preach. Jeremiah said, I don't want to preach anymore. I want to stop preaching. But then Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my He was talking about him. Isaiah said, have you not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he was talking about him. He said, he neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases their strength. He was talking about him. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall remember, see that easy. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's all about him. Him we preach. Him is the only one that can save you. Him is the only one that can give you salvation. It's all about him. Isaiah can't save you. Jeremiah can't save you. Ezekiel, Daniel, Moses, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Joel, Matthew, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Malachi. None of them can save you. Only Jesus can save you. It's all about him. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus. The Alpha 
Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. The beginning and the end. It's all about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus. The one who wanted to start. The author is about Jesus.
with heartfelt sorrow that he announced the transition of our own Ernest Hart, member and an former band driver. All services were held here at Christ Baptist Friday, September 23rd. Larry Proto, brother of our own Sherry Proto, arrangements are as follows. All services will be held at Unity Baptist Church, 2019 Connecticut Street in Gary. Friday, October 1st will be the week from noon to 8 p.m. with family hours 6 to 8. Saturday, October 2nd, there will be a viewing from 10 to 11 and the funeral will begin at 11. All services are at Unity Baptist. Also, uh, Rosalind Jameson Smith, the sister of our own Nellie Adams, arrangements are pending. Also, Lucille Taylor, the honor of our own janitor, and Antonio Jones transitioned yesterday, September 25th. Arrangements are pending. Ellen Royce, the mother of our own voices of praise member, Deborah Richardson, all services have been healed. Thomas Ward Esquire, the brother of our own early son in law, and Jerry Ward, and cousins of Milton and Lily Ward. All services will be held in Los Angeles. Fred Miller, the cousin of members Reverend Norman and William Penn, and our own media ministry, um, Paul and Lakeisha Kaiser. Those services were held September 15th. Montero, Davis, the Chief of our own trustee, Joanne, and Amy Williams, services for the old man's state, September 16th, in Tennessee. Francis Ray Davis, former member of Mother Lakeisha Ray Harris, and the daughter of our own late Quintella Adams, were held September 18th in Gary. Our former minister of music, Dylan Murphy, passed September 4th. All services were held Saturday, September 18th in Gary. Also, we have a special prayer request. Um, our own sister, Evelyn Lois, asked us to pray for a, a co-worker, um, pray for his family. Um, he transitioned, his name is, the family is Chris Bum. That's for his wife and all the family. As for those who are the prayer requests to this morning. Amen. You've heard this spoken prayer request, church, and we all stand in the need of prayer. And it's prayer time. And thank God for the Samuel Custer coming down to render the gospel of prayer. I want to make sure that we pray for this whole world, pray for the leaders of this country, pray for our, our city, our state, our nation, and our world. Pray for those who are at the border. Night, which are trying to find a better life, particularly those Haitians who are escaping earthquakes and, and flooding and hurricanes, trying to come to America. We've seen the pictures that conjure up painful memories of, of slavery where riders on horseback are chasing them and, and hitting them with whips as though they're corralling and herding animals. These are human beings who are afraid of them. Pray for every church that's open today. Pray for restoration of churches that have to close this pandemic. It's prayer time. The Samuel Custer is here now to render the awesome prayer. Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Heavenly Father, just to say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you are so good to us. Heavenly Father, we want to pray that now to as God and as God all by yourself. Heavenly Father, we want to come just lifting up Christ that is here. Lift up every member that is present today, Heavenly Father. You know what our needs are, you know what our wants are. But we ask that you grant our need according to your will, Heavenly Father. We come to you, Heavenly Father, just lifting him with a capital H up this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for salvation. 
thank you for God giving us and sacrificing his only son who died on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven and that we can have everlasting life. Heavenly Father, we ask you to please forgive us for our sins. Sins of omission and sins of omission, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, each day we try to do better and better so that we can be more and more like you each day, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we lift up our pastor for that sermon today and that we don't just keep that sermon inside of these four walls, that we take that sermon out and give it to Ephesus so that Ephesus can have a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And they will come saying, what must I do? What must I do to be saved? And let them accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in their life, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I just want to personally thank you for carrying me through 2020. I went through a lot in 2020, but Heavenly Father, I'm seeing 2021. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Not just for me, but many of us in this church have gone through difficult times in 2020. And we all see 2021 because we are here now. And we are able to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come to you just acknowledging you as God. We come thanking you for all the blessings that you have given us, Heavenly Father. We lift up every church that is open in your name. Heavenly Father, we come to you lifting up not just the United States of America, but all of the countries in the world, Heavenly Father. Not just all of the countries in the world, but our city, Gary, Indiana. We lift up our president. We lift up everything that is going on in this world. And we say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we come praising you, we come honoring you, and we come glorifying your holy name. Heavenly Father, we lift up our pastor. We lift up his wife, Heavenly Father. And we lift up every Christ that is church family. It is in the precious name of Jesus Christ that I come to you. I praise you, I honor you, I glorify you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
that a portion of which you've given to us. Help us, God, to understand that it all belongs to you. So we pray, O oh God, that you bless now to give and give her. Bless those who have the desire to give. And then, God, bless these gifts to be used to your glory. This is our prayer. We're your children and you are God. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Were you blessed by the service today? We prepare to go out from here. Let us stand now for our closing song, closing music, and the Let's uh, remember to make sure we pray for one another, watch out for one another, look out for our children that are back in school. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we thank you for all that our eyes are seen. We thank you for all that our ears have heard. And we thank you for all that our hearts have felt. We thank you, God, for, for the song of praise today. We thank you for the opportunity to surrender prayers of praise. We thank you for the word today. We especially thank you for Jesus. Now that we prepare to go out from this place, but not out of the presence, we pray, O oh God, that you go ahead of us. You go before us, that you make a way for us. But most importantly, God, the word. Now may the grace of God as Father and as Son. And the sweet commitment of God and the Holy Spirit. Let the fruit of the vine and the fears of our people now, henceforth and forevermore, world without end, and all God's people can say together, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. See you next Sunday. God bless you. Amen. Let's gather our communion elements. Let's gather our crackers and our juice or your bread and your wine at home. Let's prepare to approach the Lord's table and commune together. All hearts and minds on Calvary. The great sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made for us where his body was broken and his blood was shed. All minds, all hearts on Calvary. Some 2,000 years ago, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ met in an upper room with his band of followers, and there he instituted a memorial unto himself. Taking the bread, he blessed it, and then he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for thee. In like manner, he took the cup, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the remission of sin. Drink ye all of it. And in as often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you do so in remembrance of me. As you have prepared your elements, let us now bow in the prayer of consecration. O gracious God in heaven, Father of mercy and grace, we pray now, Lord, that you see these elements you see the bread as the broken body and the blood as the, the, the juice as the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless these elements, Lord. We pray, O oh God, that if there's anything unpleasing in our hearts or in our minds, if there's anything unpleasing in your sight, move it now in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer, Lord. We're claiming it already done in Jesus' name. Amen. Bible says they tarried, that means they waited one for another. Let us bow and commune together. Amen. Amen. Then they sang a hymn and went out on the Mount of Olives. Make sure that you extend the right hand of fellowship to those in your household. Have a blessed week. I'll see you next Sunday. Amen.